Hello, Internet! I'm Ellie the Purple Ardifus, and welcome to the conclusion of Bad Unicorn by Platt F. Clark. That's right, you heard me correctly. Today we finished this book. So I hope you finished it yourself, because I do not want to ruin anything for you. The finale of our series has Max and friends waking up in cubes, individual cubes for themselves, and Robo Princess looking up at them triumphantly. And Robo Princess kind of plays to the robot crowd that's watching as the final humans of Earth are about to be killed. And she really, really hams it up for the series finale of humans. She has Max up high, and she's talking directly to Max, and she says, look upon your friends. Tell me which one of them do you want to live? Because you only get to choose one. And Max is just kind of looking down and his friends are giving them confident words. Dwight's like, just let them kill me. And Sarah's like, let me die. I understand. His friend is like, save me. Save me. Save me right now. Save me. Pick me. Pick me. And Max looks down at his friends and right before he actually makes a choice, police robots raid. And they cut his friends loose. And and there is a battle. Princess the Unicorn, or Robocorn, or whatever you want to call her. No, I must defeat my enemies. There's this battle, and it's like this action-packed battle. Let me just say this, Internet. Endings are tough. Endings are really tough. And this one, this one's not the best. So Princess the Robocorn is really mad, and she's trying to kill all of the humans. And Max has this moment where he remembers talking with the Wes from last section, where the Wes says, just relax and listen. And in the middle of the battle, Max just kind of stops and breathes and meditates. And usually in a story like this, this is only taking place over a second or two. And in the movies, they show that by slowing everything down and just really emphasizing that he's taking his time. In the book, he actually takes a lot longer. He stops, he meditates, Princess has enough time to notice him meditating, and rather than attacking Max, the one human that she really, really, really wants to kill, she yells at him. And she says, are you seriously just going to stand there and not fight? And she waits for him to respond. And it's like, no, this is not how an ending goes. Why? And Max doesn't have the codex right now. The codex was lost in the firestorm last section. And he's sitting there meditating and suddenly the magic just kind of clicks for him. He magically reworks Princess's programming, since she's essentially a robot now, and makes it so that she hungers for robots instead of humans. And Princess goes around and starts killing robots. And that's very satisfying, but it was just that, that moment where he was stopping and meditating for so long and the enemy wasn't attacking, they were just kind of yelling at him like, hey, do something characters! After that battle, Max and his friends are stuck in the future for months on end. Probably pretty close to a year stuck in the future. And they are stuck with the Frobbits and they're learning to cope with life. Max's friends are trying to be as comforting as possible to Max, letting him know that they know it's going to take time in order for him to figure out how to get them back home. They still want to get back home. And Max is exploring the world after most of the robots have been destroyed by a Robo Princess and finds a decrepit, hollowed out Robo Princess because she ended up eating herself. In this pile of robot skeletons, he finds a glowing gem. And what I'm thinking, he's found the Gilman. So now he can find the Codex. But the book goes a different direction. Dirk comes up to his friends and says, I want to take you to this beautiful cave. I want to take you to this beautiful spot. We'll just enjoy the scenery. And so all of his friends go with him to this cave and they're, they're overlooking this area where it's like one side is a beautiful ocean, the other side are beautiful mountains, and it's just a wonderful view when all of a sudden, excuse me a moment, what are you doing in my cave? A man comes up behind him. And this man is Opsicar, the Dragon Lord that I was telling you about. The one early on in the book who had that maybe 
a minute, minute and a half scene where it's just two men in the rain going, Mute! Magic is seeping into the Earthling's realm! That guy. The one who was also mentioned as the Dragon King. He has a proposition for Max and his friends. He says, I'll send you back to your past if you kill a sorcerer for me. Max and his friends are kind of arguing over this. They're like, we're not really killers. We don't really kill people. But before they can come to an agreement, the sky starts turning dark and lightning starts striking everywhere. You don't look like a dragon! And Alpsicard kind of leaps off a cliff and a dragon appears. And it's like, And as the lightning is striking, the dragon shoots black clouds from his mouth. The black clouds surround Max and his friends and they are vanished from our distant future. The final chapter is probably a page and a half to two pages long. It's Max and his friends and they're hanging upside down in this goblin's kitchen. And this goblin is fixing to eat Max and his friends. She says, I, I think you, 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 Mr. Max, you must be some kind of crafter of some kind. I need mittens! And Max kind of looks down and he sees what she's commenting on, his backpack. And in his backpack is the codex. And he remembers, like, reading about goblin mittens in the codex. And says, yeah, I think I can help you. And that's pretty much where this book ends. But it's not where the story ends. There are two other books in this series, and I didn't realize that until about halfway into the book. So we have two other books to read, not immediately, but later. Later, we will have two other books to read to find out what happens to Max and his crew. I don't have a question for you because it's the end of the book. The question that I had yesterday was about battles. I watch a lot of cheesy horror films. One of my favorite battles is from a movie called Deathgasm and it's basically you have demons that have taken over this this city and a punk rock band that are trying to fight against the demons and the most hilarious one is when the punk rock band go back to I think it's a lead guitarist's home and find out that his parents are taken over by demons it's awesome you should watch it if you are of an appropriate age because it's hilarious but adult. Do not forget that the next book that I will be reading is Stephen King's The Gunslinger. Go out and grab it by any legal means necessary. Borrow it from a friend, borrow it from a library, buy it at a bookstore, buy it on a Kindle. I don't care what you do as long as it's legal and you read it before I ruin it for you. I've been Elliot the Purple Air Difference reminding you to watch the Jim Radius and I will see you all in the beginning of The Gunslinger by Stephen King. Toodles!